Good morning. This is Holy Week. Lent is nearly over as tomorrow begins the Easter Triduum, the holiest three days of the church's year where we recall the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus. Dear Jesus, open our hearts that we may learn to be your disciples and to follow your example of self-giving love. Please stand and join in singing Christ in me arise, number 525, the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. As we come together to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and strength. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord have, mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, who willed your Son to submit for our sake to the yoke of the cross, so that you might drive from us the power of the enemy, grant us, your servants, to attain the grace of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. 
Morning after morning he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned my back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. He is near who upholds my right. If anyone wishes to oppose me, let us appear together. Who disputes my right? Let him confront me. See, the Lord God is my help. Who will prove me wrong? The word of the Lord. Lord, in your great love, answer me. For your sake, I bear insult, and shame covers my face. I have become an outcast to my brothers, a stranger to my mother's sons, because zeal for your house consumes me, and the insults of those who blaspheme you fall upon me. Lord, in your great love, answer me. Answer me. Insult has broken my heart, and I am weak. I looked for sympathy, but there was none. For consolers, not one could I find. Rather, they put gall in my food, and in my thirst they gave me vinegar to drink. Lord, in your great love, answer me. I will praise the name of God in song, and I will glorify him with thanksgiving. See your lowly ones and be glad. You who seek God, may your hearts revive. For the Lord hears the poor, and his own who are in bonds he spurns not. Lord, in your great love, answer. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. One of the twelve who was called Judas Iscariot went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him. The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him, one after another, Surely is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes, as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas' betrayer said in reply, 
Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. The Gospel of the Lord. What we hear in this gospel today is the primary reason that we have Holy Week. That there is a suffering and death of Jesus. The primary reason? Betrayal. I would think out of all the emotions that we experience in our lives, and they're all really hard ones, sadness, anger, being upset, grieving, jealousy, I don't think there's any worse emotion or experience to have when someone betrays you. Someone you trust someone you love, someone you care about, does something to you so terrible for their own benefit, and they don't care that they hurt you. Although we are to forgive all sin, that is one of the toughest. I would hope and pray that none of you ever have to experience betrayal because it can really do something to you. It can make you really rethink about trusting anybody and feeling positive about anyone. And yet here we are in this gospel today. One of Jesus' friends, one of his apostles, does this to him. He even gets paid 30 pieces of silver to do it. And then he can't even face up to Jesus and say, yeah, I'm... I'm going to have you arrested. So, we're in this week, as was mentioned in the introduction, entering into these three holiest days of the year. Holy Thursday being about the institution of the Eucharist through the Last Supper, at the Last Supper. The institution of the priesthood. Tomorrow is a feast day for all priests. And it's also about being of service to one another. Doing the opposite of betrayal. Love through the washing of feet. And then after that, what is to be our behavior and attitude on Good Friday? We're called to be sad. Not many times do we ever encourage anybody to feel sad, but let's say somber and grief because Jesus died. He really and truly died. It wasn't like he pretended to die because he's a son of God, so, you know, he's not really feeling any of the pain that he's having. He experienced every single human emotion that any of us would if we were put into that situation, which was terrible. First being betrayed, eventually, by all of his friends. They all left him. And then to have to endure something he didn't even deserve. Being whipped his flesh being torn away from him, wearing a crown of thorns deep into his skull, to be nailed to a cross, bleeding to death, naked, humiliated, and dying. Why? Why would he do that? Why would anybody do that? Well, we all know the answer, don't we? It's why we're here. It's why we're going to have Holy Week. It's why we're in the middle of it right now. Because he didn't want us to suffer that. He doesn't want us to suffer 
the deserved consequences of our sin. So think about this. Think about a time that you really got into a lot of trouble. Have we all been there? Yeah. We've done something. We, whether it's breaking something, or we hit our brother or sister, or we broke something in our house, or we stole something. We did something that felt so terrible that we didn't know what to do. And we knew that we were going to be found out about it. And then you're waiting to be punished, right? What is that going to look like? And then someone comes along and says, you know what? I'll take the blame for you. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah, you need to take responsibility for what you've done, but you're not going to be grounded. You're not going to be yelled at. I'll take all that for you. Well, in a very major way, that's what Jesus did for all of us. Because of our sin, we should die. But Jesus said no. His father's plan was to have us live forever. And he did it to the point of sending his own son to take our place. To suffer betrayal, to suffer all the bad things that can ever happen to a human being. He took it upon himself. And died because of our sins. If you think about that, that's an extraordinary love that none of us could ever give to another. We may come close, but being who Jesus is, did it unconditionally. There wasn't anything he was looking for to get out of all of this. What am I going to benefit by doing this? What reward am I going to get? His motivation was, what is your reward going to be? And what are you going to get because of what I've done? You're going to have eternal life. You're going to be given an opportunity and promise if you trust me. Because I'm going to open the gates of heaven. And you're going to get to experience it while you're in on this world. You're going to have a church that's going to have all of that in place for you to remind you of what has been won for you. The greatest gift of all. And it all came from somebody and all of his apostles betraying him. Because that was the way in which he was able then to embrace his hour of suffering and death, which results in resurrection. So I want to encourage all of us to not look at this time as I get a few days off, or it gives us an opportunity to do something fun. This particular week, we should be taking time to pray. And we should be at all three, we should be at the services that are going to be taking place. Holy Thursday is at 7 o'clock. The Good Friday service is at 7 o'clock. If you'd like to come to the Easter Vigil, that would be awesome. But Easter Sunday, of course, is a carryover of that. So you're really not going on vacation. It's not a vacation for you. You're off school. But it's really to take an opportunity to pray. And to know how much Jesus loves you and what he did for you. And then we renew our promises to him and say, Lord, I'll try my best to live like you. And to be good. And to be forgiving. And to sacrifice. Because the benefit and reward is going to be being with you forever. With faith and confidence in our God, we now offer these prayers and petitions.
for our holy fathers and believers, that in their faith in the resurrection make them joyful messengers of salvation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, especially in places where there is still war, that all people may live without fear. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, lonely, and forgotten, those without family or friends, that they receive love, care, and compassion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who will receive the Easter sacrament this Holy Saturday, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For an increase in vocations to Catholic marriage, the priesthood, and religious life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died, may they live with God in heaven forever, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Father, with faith and trust and confidence, we bring these prayers and needs before you, knowing that you will grant them according to your will, through your Son, Christ our Lord. Please join in singing Beautiful Is Your Love, number 373. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Father Almighty. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings made here, and graciously grant that celebrating your Son's passion and mystery, we may experience the grace of its effects. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. 
for the days of his saving passion and glorious resurrection are approaching, by which the pride of the ancient foe is vanquished, and the mystery of our redemption in Christ is celebrated. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that, converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. Now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill and we celebrate these mysteries. For what about to give us life, to set us free, as he reclined at supper, he took bread in his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Mitchell our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. command and for by divine teaching we dare to say our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
please join in our communion song, Were You There, number 159, 
Let us pray. Endow us, almighty God, with the firm conviction that through your Son's death and time, to which the revered mysteries bear witness, we may be assured of perpetual life through Christ our Lord. Amen. So have a prayerful Holy Week and have a joyful Easter. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow down for the blessing. Grant your faithful, O Lord, we pray, to partake unceasingly of the Paschal mysteries and to await with longing the gifts to come, that persevering in the sacraments of their rebirth, they may be led by Lenten works to newness of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. To make an announcement, we will be having confessions this morning. For those of you who stay for the rosary, there will be a bit of a delay for you. We'll be exposing the Blessed Sacrament after the service. May Almighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. go in peace. Thanks be to God. Please join in singing Jesus Remember Me, number 413. Jesus.